Hey guys, welcome back to Chemical Guys. So today we are doing the third part of this detail on the S2000, and we're gonna be removing the scratches and the swirls in this paint. Most of you guys have been asking this question. You're not sure what to do. How do I do it? Like, how do I get them out is basically what we've been getting a lot of questions about. So we are gonna go over the steps that you need to take and the best tips to make sure you polish and use the right tools and equipment to get out the scratches and swirls in the paint. So as you can see, there's a lot of swirls, there's scratches, there's some spots that even have touch-up paint. So we're gonna go over what you need to do when you have stuff like that, how to tape it, how to get it prepared, and how to choose the right chemicals. So here we have our machines and we have the chemicals that we're using. So Nick and I today are gonna go over this whole car. It's not very big, but we wanted to make sure that we showed you all the proper steps because a lot of you are now getting into using a polisher or maybe you're still scared about using one. Uh, it's definitely not a scary task. I, I do it and <laughs> it could be scary or I was scared at first, um, but it's actually really easy to do. And with the right tools, uh, it will come out pretty good. So I'm excited to see what the before and after may look like because I was just telling Nick a second ago that it already looks really bright and red, but as I say, it's the curse. We see those swirls and scratches and they stand out so much. So we are going to use the right tools and hopefully bring back a better red finish. So before we get started, we want to go over what the first step is. And the first step is you need to tape up the car. And why do we need to tape it? about the staining, <laughs> damage to yep. certain parts. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you don't want to um, damage any of the parts that you don't want to get, like emblems. Uh, you don't want to stain the uh, plastic trim. So you want to make sure to tape up at the area before you start polishing. Uh, and then that would be your first step. But before we get over to taping, I just wanted to show what we have here. You don't have to use all these products in your polish, but I wanted to show you the lineup of the compounds and polishes we do have so that uh, you get a better understanding of where you're going to choose. And we're going to go over it in depth when we're doing the polish. Uh, but we have our V-Line, we have the VSS, all-in-one polish, and that pad conditioner. One of the questions we get also when we're polishing uh, on many of our videos is, what is that thing you're spraying when you're polishing, and how often do I have to spray? So we listen to all your comments, so we really appreciate when you guys comment and give us some suggestions. Uh, we try to answer all of them, but today on this video, we're trying to answer most of the questions we do uh, see from polishing. So comment below any questions you have, and we'll hopefully make a video of it. If not, we'll definitely try to answer it in the comments. So let's get to taping first, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the different polishes and doing a test spot. I think so. So we finished taping up the car. Again, we wanted to make sure to tape up any emblems or any trim pieces before we start the polishing or even our test spot. So that's your first step in making sure that you're ready to polish or correct your paint, whatever term you use, will basically remove the swirls and scratches from your car. So we are going to use, we pulled out our dual action random orbitals. So we're using the Torque. We have two different machines. I'm going to use the 10FX. Uh, it's an eight millimeter throw. Nick is going to use the 22D that has a 21 millimeter throw because he wants to cover more area that he can. There is a lot of big spaces that are flat and I'm going to do some of the smaller spaces with the 10FX. Uh, so mine has a 5 inch pad and Nick's has a 6 inch. We already chose our pad so when you're starting out you want to choose the right equipment, the right pad, and the right chemical. We chose Random Orbitals Dual Action. It's a great machine for you to use if you've never polished. Uh, even if you have experience polishing, these have great power and are still getting the cutting ability that a rotary would do. Uh, rotaries, which most people are scared of doing polishing because they always hear, what if I'm gonna burn my paint? With the random orbital, it randomly oscillates. So the chances of you burning your paint is a lot far less than using a rotary polisher. So uh, torque machines are great at that. Just random orbitals in general are gonna give you the power you need for cutting and also be safe for you to use so you're not having to worry about that. So we're gonna give you all the other tips to make sure that you follow to keep your finish like you want it and being safe while you're polishing. So we use the orange pads. Uh, we started off with the pads because these are your cutting pads. So we're starting off with orange because that's kind of a great middle ground to go. If we needed a heavier duty uh, pad, then we would move ourselves up into a yellow. But orange is a great safe way to go. Our rule of thumb, like we were going over when we did play bar, is you never want to go too aggressive 
you want to start in the middle and then you work your way up or down depending on the results you get. So that's what we're going to show you when we do the first test spot. So the other question we get is about the V-lines. What do I do? There's four of them. Uh, the V-line series is meant to work in a multi-step correction, uh, unless you're just doing one. So the reason they're numbered the way they are is it goes from the 32 is the most aggressive, 38 is your least aggressive, that's what you finish with. So we are always, like I said, again, we recommend starting in the middle. Uh, after looking at the car, you can try to go to 32, but we never recommend that. Uh, because you don't know, maybe you think it looks bad, but really it's going to work well with something a little bit higher. So we're going to start with 36, and then after we do our test spot, we're going to see, do we need to go down to 34, or are we okay to do the correction with that and then finish with the 38? Typically, if you go with 34 or 32, or even 36, you do need to finish by going up the stages. So if you had 34, then you would go up to 36 and 38. So what does that mean? That means you have a three-step pain correction. Here we're hoping that we just have to do two steps. <laughs> uh, but usually, if it's severely oxidized, severely swirled, scratches, and you have to go to 32, you got to keep going up. That's how it works. And then you have your one steps, which we'll get into after this. I don't want to overwhelm you before we do our test spot. So we're going to start with the 36 and our orange pad. Uh, the pad we are using has a hole in the middle, and we get that question too. Why does it have a hole? The hole in the middle is to help uh, disperse the heat. Usually with the rotary machine, you want to make sure you have to. In a sense, we really recommend it. Uh, with the dual action, you don't. You can use the regular HexLogic pads. But today we're going to use the uh, HexLogic Quantum because we want to make sure to reduce any heat and friction there also. So Nick's going to start with the 36 on a test spot, and then... Um, then we'll see what the results are. So, also, the other question that we're talking about, pad conditioner. Pad conditioner is used to make sure that your pad doesn't get hot. It's basically the gist of it. So, you want to make sure it's uh, lubricated or moisturized, whichever word you want to use for it, uh, while you're polishing. Like, again, it's reducing the heat friction. These are machines, so they are producing heat and cutting through this world of scratches. So that's why we spray it a few times before we start, and then we spray it sometimes in between polishing, and that's what you've seen in other videos, uh, and that's why I want to make sure we address that question because we do get that not knowing what we're spraying and why. So when you're applying the uh, product onto your pad, you want to do about three to four dots. Usually it's four uh, small dots, and then you will apply it onto the surface, and so when Nick comes over, we'll show you what you have to do. And you've seen, we've also used it uh, in this bottle and in other videos or pictures that you may have seen. We have it diluted into a spray bottle, a secondary spray bottle. Usually we have a gallon size, and so we pour it in there. We do use a lot of that when you're polishing, uh, but a 16 ounce is sufficient enough to get through more than one polishing job, as I've seen. So before you actually turn on the machine, you want to go over an area. We usually recommend, just like with Clay Bar, we recommend a two-by-two two area, and you want to dab it out onto the surface, uh, and then you're going to spread it on the lowest speed setting. So as you can see, Nick is keeping the pad flat on the surface, and that is one highlight thing that you want to make sure you're doing while you're polishing, is keeping it as flat on the surface as possible. After you finish working in the product on speed setting 1, you went up to the speed setting that says 40 on the 22D uh, and started working it in. When you're doing that, you want to go in a what we call a cross-hatching pattern, uh, back and forth until you work in the product uh, to like a translucent finish. So you'll see the product start to, in a sense, dissipate, uh, and that's removing all those scratches and swirls, and that's when you know it's fine to move on to the next. Uh, another note, he was making sure to keep the cable from the polisher away from the surface of the paint and the exterior vehicles. He put it on over his shoulder uh, and kept it there so that you don't damage the paint. So after he did that test spot, we can look at it and see what the results are and figure out if we're going to go up or down or we're okay with staying with this polish. Alright, so Nick finished the test spot and now we're going to look at the results. 
from what we can see, the V36 with the orange pad actually worked really well at removing all the scratches and swirls. One thing we noticed when we finished this is the orange pad actually has a little bit of paint on it. That usually will happen when you have either a single stage paint or maybe the surface has been repainted. Uh, so it's not alarming. Uh, you, it's fine if a little bit of paint is coming off. It's normal, especially like I said, with single stage paint or if it's been repainted. Uh, I wasn't aware that it had been repainted there or maybe it hasn't, we're not sure, but that's usually the case, uh, but that is okay. Uh, we're still removing all the scratches and swirls and what we can see is that 36 is working. Now, if we hadn't uh, been doing so well with 36, then we would have changed. And we actually didn't test this before, so we had no idea, we just went with what we usually do, which is 36, because we wanted to make sure to show you exactly how you would be doing it on your car. So 36 worked, but if it didn't, we would have either changed our pad gone to a more aggressive pad, which is the yellow pad, and still use 36, or we would have changed into going down to 34 with an orange pad. Nick mentioned that one question he's noticed that we get is, if I used, let's say, this pad and I had 36, but now I'm gonna switch to 34, can I use the same pad? We don't recommend that, uh, or using it right after, because now you're gonna cross-contaminate between the chemicals, so you either need to clean your pad, or you need to just use another pad if you don't want to clean in between. Uh, and we have some great videos on showing you how to clean pads. Uh, and it's quite simple. We have a pad cleaner and a brush. Uh, but you don't usually want to use the same pad and start adding another chemical on top. So we're going to do the whole car with V36 and the orange pad. I'm going to use the 10FX and Nick is going to use the 22. <laughs> on either the side panels or any of the curved surfaces. So whenever you're on any surface, whether it be uh, the flat or the sides, you wanna make sure to keep it at a flat angle. Uh, flat might feel weird on the sides because to you what flat feels like isn't the same as what the car's feeling. So Nick is, nest is flat on it, but you might be thinking that this is flat and that's not. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that the pad itself is actually flat. Uh, one thing we forgot to mention and I want to mention now was the pressure. That's a question we get all the time is like how do I know how much I should be pushing down on the machine? Basically you're putting almost no pressure. It's very light. Uh, let the machine do the work for you. The machine is gliding. It's moving itself. You're basically just pushing it along. Uh, so if you see Nick's pressure normally looks about that. That pressure is that. <laughs> uh, it's hard to see when the machine's on, so that's why we wanted to show you while the machine's off, is to keep just the light pressure. We get a lot of questions about that, and I think uh, we feel that we need to really work it in, and we start pushing down on it. Uh, if you feel that you're doing that, relax. That's when you'll know that uh, you're in the right spot. If you feel like you're tense, you're most likely doing a lot of pressure on it. So Nick's going to do the side panels. Again, when you're working on these areas, you're keeping it flat. When you go into a curve like this, you don't want to jab the machine sideways or the pad per se uh, sideways. You want to just keep it flat. Like just keep that as a rule of thumb no matter where you're working. And now when you're on the sides, find a way to sit on something. We use our bucket dolly. We sit on it so that it's easier to glide. It has wheels. So you're gliding yourself while the machine is also gliding along the surfaces. Uh, when you're mentioning about the small area here, you can also work from the hood and then come up working your way this way. It's easier to then coming down on it, so work your way across. Uh, kind of working yeah. with the body lines. Yeah, so just feel. So <laughs> Nick's gonna work on that. I'm gonna work on the door. Now because this is a convertible, we notice there's a lot more scratches on the top of the door by the window uh, than usual, and that is because 
top's down, the windows are down, you're grabbing onto the door. So I'm gonna work on that curve, uh, Nick's gonna work on this fender, and then we're gonna show you our results. Thumbs up. Yes. Uh, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.